Hey, what's going on, peoples? Cody from Southeast Softwash. Um, I was going to do this video like 50 times, and I, I just don't think about doing it during the week. But um, something that I had to deal with when we started the business full-time, and it's something that you may be dealing with, this is not specific to pressure washing or soft washing, exterior cleaning type stuff. Most of our guys are either soft washers, pressure washers, window cleaners, those kind of guys. Uh, but it could be lawn care. It could be any service business, really any business. So I had a really good job and I had always worked and earned pretty decent money for our area that we lived in. And uh, my wife worked. So, you know, two income household and we're doing okay. And and I had made some financial stupidness in my 20s, like most of us do. Gotten into a little bit of debt, but we paid all that off. Um, so on the back side of 25, approaching 30, we were doing okay. But I was really dissatisfied with my career track. And I knew that there was money to be made in, in the soft washing industry, which is my small business of choice. Just what I had been familiar with and what I had been doing on the side. And so making the decision to go full-time... You may be getting some some flack, and here's my my fiddly thing for the day. That's a trailer pin. I'm just uh, I like to fiddle with something. Let's fiddle with something cooler. Got me a little Hinderer XM18 yesterday, a little skinny one. I like this. It's smaller than my other normal knife that I carry. Um, but when you start a business and you go full time, it's a very scary thing, and you as the business owner, you as the, the guy or the girl that's taking that step, that especially if you're already in a successful career path, at least money-wise, you're making good money, you've got benefits, you've got a 401k, you've got vacation time, you've got retirement, you've got health insurance, all this stuff. Uh, making that transition from there to stepping out on faith and starting a small business is extremely scary especially when you've got a family, like I was worst case scenario. I've got a family, I got a mortgage, I got all these things. And, you know, I don't like my job, but I'm doing, I'm providing for my family, which is my, my big job. My main job is provide for my family. So walking away from somewhere you've been at for seven years in a management role, it's a risk. Well, it's bad enough that you have to process that in your mind and get the courage up and look at all the pros and cons and weigh your options and you finally decide, okay, I think I can make this work. But then you've got to convince all the people around you. Like you had to convince your significant other, I had to convince my wife. I had, fortunately she was always on board with, you know, whatever I wanted to do. Um, but other people in your life, your parents may not understand what you're doing. Uh, my mom and dad, they freaked out. They were like, Oh, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> I got this. Yeah, it's going to be all right because I was, again, I'm, I'm almost 30. I'm grown. I do what I want to, but they were just concerned. My in-laws, super concerned. Like, oh my gosh, what is this, you know, freaking stupid son-in-law. He's crazy. What is he doing? Um, they never said that, but that I know that, I know they were thinking that and they, it's not that they didn't support me, but if I was them, I would have had the same thoughts. Here's my daughter and my grandchildren and my retarded son-in-law is quitting his job and trying to start this business. And so, especially in the service industry and, and something like soft washing, which is kind of a niche, not everybody is familiar with it. And so they're going to be skeptical that you're going to survive. And most of the people in your life, they're doing it from a, a place of love. They're doing it because they're worried about you. Um, but how do you, what do you do? You know, how do you deal with that? Well, it's going to be some trying times. Just understand on the front end, if you're at the position where you're about to start a business, understand that not everybody around you is going to be as passionate about your your endeavors as you are. They shouldn't be. It's not their endeavors. It's, it's your endeavor. It's your journey. It's your life. And so I'll say this. Uh, definitely, I can say this for sure. I had to get in my mind that I was not going to do what I had watched my dad do. My dad had went and worked every day of his life in a plant and he hated it, but he made good money. He, you know, he took care of his family and so yay for that, but he was miserable and he could have done something differently and, and been a little happier. And, and I'm just not, I'm not willing to work 
50 years, 40 years somewhere at a couple of different companies, you know, move around, but the same place, same thing everywhere. You're going and clocking in, you're on somebody else's time. To me, it wasn't even about making more money. It was just about the freedom to be responsible for my own time. Like the, the, the feeling of, oh my gosh, I got to get to work. I got to get to work. I got to get to work. You leave, I'd leave the house at 430 in the morning and like, I got to be there at a certain time. And you don't even have the, the luxury to pull off into a gas station and get a drink or, you know, read a newspaper or, or anything. Like, you, you've got to be here at X time. you got to do this. you got to report to these people. I just, I didn't want to keep doing that. So, really for me, it was more about the freedom of starting your own business and, and being able to... Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have things to do. You actually have a million more things to do, but at least they're your things. They're your things to do. So... Uh, understand that your family, it's not that they may not be supporting you. You may could phrase it like that and frame it like that, depending on your situation, but you're going to have to sell them on the idea and it, it may not happen. It may take a couple of years before they come around. After year one, you know, we started in, uh, the end of January in 2017. And so to all of 2017 goes by and we didn't miss a paycheck. We made it every week. We did enough jobs to pay myself and pay Dusty. Uh, we paid each. We, I paid him a thousand dollars a week. Paid myself a thousand dollars a week. Uh, at that time, he was just working for me, kind of. We were, but now we're business partners. And so, hey, a grand a week for you, a grand a week for me, uh, and cover our bleach and soap and fuel in the truck and you know piddly stuff, and we're good to go. And we made it every week. Now there were some weeks where we made extra, and there were some weeks where we made less, but we only took out what we absolutely needed for payroll and we survived. So 2017, whew, 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 we made it. And then, so you feel a lot better going into 2018 and then 2018 goes by. Whew, whew, we made it again. And uh, we, we've done a little better this year, right? And so we're, we're learning uh, admin things. We're learning things to make our lives better. We're putting systems in place now at this point. Year one is going to be a grind. Uh, I would really encourage you to put systems in place earlier rather than later. Uh, things like CRM software, getting a website, just have yourself a plan of attack instead of just waking up every day and you got to figure it out every day. Like I got to figure out what to do today. Have a, have a plan that what you're going to do every day, how you handle your business, uh, the jobs you will take, the jobs you won't take, figure all that stuff out as early as possible and you'll save yourself a lot of headache. But now after we've made it a couple years and I'm, I'm paying myself more than I was making at my previous job. And so I'm doing okay. We haven't missed a paycheck. We're good. Year two goes by. Now people are starting to come around. They're like, okay, okay, okay. I thought he was just going to be a bum. You know, I thought he was just going to be, uh, it's funny to see people around town, like acquaintances and casual friends and stuff. They're like, year, year one, first six months are like, Man, are y'all gonna make it? Y'all, you gonna be? Are you sure about this? And then the, the little more time goes by, and they're like, okay, okay. And then year two, they just start taking it for granted, and then they start saying things like, M "Must be nice. I bought bought this little truck, uh, bought the shop. You know, buy a new work truck. We start being able to spend some money, and then you, they say things like, "Well, it must be nice. Oh, he sure is lucky. No, 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 no. That'll make a business owner really pissed off because you know." the hundred hour weeks that you put in to make it grow so that it is sustainable, so that it is an actual business. It's luck can't have nothing to do with it. But just understand that you may, not everybody in your little circle is going to be as passionate about your journey as you are. And you got to pick your own journey. Like if you want to keep going and clocking in somewhere, that's fine. But understand that there are hundreds of guys, me included, that made it. We stepped out on faith. We we made decisions. Now we were smart about it. We we saved up a little money. We had some capital to buy equipment. We get started. We do our marketing thing. We do it. It's not like you just go out there and expect to be successful. You have to put in work. It's not easy, but it can be done. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people across the country that are very successful running their own small business, no matter what that business is. And you can do it too. You don't have to you don't have to go be miserable at a job. You don't have to. That's the American dream. Be an entrepreneur. If that's what you're passionate about, then go go do it. There is you only live once, my YOLO. <laughs> it's true. You only live once. And why would you go be miserable every day clocking in for somebody else 
and and just being miserable. Like I said, I didn't I didn't start my business to make more money necessarily. I I was good at the money level we were making was uh, about right. Now I do make more money now, but that wasn't my motivation. My motivation was just to be free in my time. Um, so things you've got to take into account. One of the biggest things that uh, I kept getting thrown in my face, get hearing about was health insurance, health insurance, health insurance. Well, we're not going to have any health insurance. If you, if you quit and you start this business, I mean, what are we going to do for health insurance? I finally had to set my wife down one day and was like, look, we have health insurance now. We pay for it every month out of our paycheck. We never go to the doctor. Like we haven't been to the doctor in the last 10 years. We're just taking money and throwing it away. So there are private health insurance plans that you can get. They're expensive, but you have to weigh those options out. Like, you know, the country, humanity existed for thousands of years. and There was no such thing as health insurance. And so is it a good thing to have? Yeah. I mean, I do want to have it, but I'm not going, I, I will not trade 40 plus years of me being miserable in a factory so that we can have health insurance. Like, okay, we'll get around to getting health insurance. In the meantime, let's be careful and hope that nothing bad happens. And then we'll build up to the point where we can get health insurance uh, if that's something that we want to have. But you don't, you don't have to have it. <laughs> like you, you, you'll be all right. You know, people survive without health insurance. So things like that, like retirement. People ask you all, well, what are you going to do for retirement? Like the only way that you can have retirement is to work somewhere and have a company matched 401k. Like that's the only option, right? No, it's not the only option. You can, you can have retirement plans on your own, duh. But people just don't, they don't think that way because all they know is going to a building, swapping a time card and going to work all day and then going, they got their little lunch pail and their thermos and then they go home at the end of the day. Like that's all they know. Like Fred Flintstone, literally, that's all they know. The horn blows and they go to break and that they, they've got the system. Like they're plugged into the matrix. And when you start your business and you get out for the first few months and you, you're okay, you're doing okay and you're making it, it's like you're unplugged from the matrix. And it's just, it's such a liberating feeling, but not everybody's going to get it. They're, they don't have to get it. The cool thing is they don't have to get it. You got to get it. You got to sell it to your, your immediate people your family, those that are in your care, those are the only people that have to get it. So hopefully you guys have somebody in your corner that will support you. Um, but listen, I'm, I'm just telling you, it can be done. It ain't for everybody, but it can be done. And you can be very successful running your own business. Um, put money aside, save, be frugal. The first time you make a big check, don't go blow it, save it because things happen. Uh, you've, you've got to be the person that takes care of things now. Like if you're at work and a machine breaks or something tears up, the company pays for it. You don't feel that loss. Well, now you're going to feel that loss because you are the company. So you got to be diligent. You got to be very cautious, stack money aside, be careful with how you spend money on, on everything. Just because you got $5,000 in the bank don't mean nothing. I mean, $5,000 go like that. Uh, taxes, figure out all that stuff. Make sure you're, you're, P's and Q's are your own point because you can screw yourself very easily. But as long as you're doing what you need to be do, need to be doing, you're diligent, you're uh, you're working every day. You know, you'll be okay. Like it, you can do it. So I really just wanted to put that out there and encourage you guys. If you're coming up against some resistance and starting your small business, fight through it. Have a plan. Uh, don't fly by the seat of your plant of your pants, but you can take people like me, others out there, and you can show your your significant others, your loved ones. You can say, "Look, these guys made it. I'm going to go do what they did, and we're going to make it." All right, I'm going to church here. It's getting hot in this truck. Hope y'all have a fantastic Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, and uh, we'll check in with you guys next week.